Okay, so we are asked to find the missing link x in this quadrilateral. It's this diagonal here. Um, in your text, they do an example with a parallelogram, but this does not tell us it's a parallelogram. It does not tell us it's a trapezoid. All that we know is it's a quadrilateral. So those are the only properties we have to go on. And so that makes this a little more difficult. Um, now notice if we wanted to find x, we can isolate a triangle right here and it would be nice to be able to use the law of sines or cosines to find the value of x. But we don't have enough information because to use the law of cosines we need either three sides or we need two sides and the angle opposite the missing side. And we are missing the measure of this angle here. So instead what we're going to do is we are going to use the, this triangle. We're going to split our quadrilateral into two pieces and use the triangles we do have three sides for to find the missing angle here and the missing angle here. Then we can add them together and then we'll be able to use the law of cosines to find the x we were actually looking for. Okay, so again, we're going to just split this and please forgive my hideous drawing here. So notice this triangle has sides 3, 7.6, and 8. And I need to find this angle right here, A, because it's my angle here. Okay. We are also going to split and have the top portion. We need that also. And notice it has length 6, 8, and 2.4. And that looks a bit like a right angle, but I can't assume that it is. Okay. And we are wanting to find angle B. It's this portion here. Like I said, then we will put them together once we know what they are. Here, we have three known sides of our triangle, so we can use the law of cosines to find a missing angle. We want to start setting it up with the side opposite the angle we're looking for, which is length three, that side squared. is equal to the other two sides squared separately and added together, minus two times the two sides that we do know, 7.6 and eight, Okay, that are not opposite our angle, times the cosine of our missing angle. Okay, so we go ahead and start calculating this out. The first thing I'm going to do is calculate my squares here and the negative 2 times 7.6 times 8. Okay, so we've done that. 3 squared is 9, 8 squared is 64, 7.6 squared is 57.76, and negative 2 times 7.6 times 8 was a negative 121.8 times my cosine of a. The next thing I want to do is solve for cosine a, so I want to move everything else to this other side. If I go ahead and combine, add the 64 and the 57.6, sorry, 57.76, okay, I misspoke there, I get 121.76, that's minus 121.8 cosine of a. Now these are multiplied together, so they need to stick together but I can subtract 121.76 and if I do that I get 112.76 is equal to 121.8 cosine of A. Now again we want to solve for cosine of A it's multiplied by this negative 121.8 so to remove that we would divide by negative 121.8. Okay, now I'm down to, okay, and we get about 0.9257. I would suggest just leaving that number in your calculator as we do this next step. To remove cosine, we do the opposite, which is to take the arc sine or inverse cosine, depending on which terminology you're used to. The inverse cosine of both sides. So again, just leave that in your calculator do the inverse cosine of 0.92577 and I get about 22, I get 22.21. I'm just going to round that off to 22 degrees. So I am partway there. I have found this portion of my triangle. Now I'm going to come over here with my other triangle and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so again, we have three known sides of a triangle and we wanna find a missing angle. So we start with the side opposite that missing angle, which is 6 squared, plus the other two sides squared individually and added together, 
minus 2 times those other two sides, 8 and 2.4, times the cosine of our angle. The next step is to calculate all of these values. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so here we have 36 equals 8 squared is 64 plus 2.4 squared is 5.76 minus 2 times 8 times 2.4 was 38.4 times the cosine of B. Again, I'm going to add these two values together on my journey to solve for B. Alrighty, so that puts us here. I added those two together, I get 69.76. I'm going to subtract that from both sides. Again, my goal is to get the cosine B all alone. gives me negative 33.76 is equal to negative 38.4 times the cosine of B. Alright, next, this negative 38.4, I'm going to divide both sides by that value, so that I have cosine of B by itself. Apologize for the ugly writing that's coming out right now. <laughs> Okay, so negative 33.76 divided by negative 38.4 gives me approximately 8.791. But again, leave that value in your calculator for this next step because to remove a cosine, we do the opposite, which is the inverse cosine or again, arc cosine if you're used to that word instead. Do the arc cosine of that number which again I just left in my calculator so that I could have as close to the exact answer as possible. And when I do, I get that B is about 28.5. I get 28.45. I'm just going to round that to 28.5. All right, so we are one more step closer to this solution. Okay, one step at a time. Again, our goal was to find the measure of this angle here so that we could use the law of cosine to find the diagonal x. Okay, well, we know that this part is 22 and this part is 28.5. So if I add those two together, I get 50.5. So I am looking at this triangle with the diagonal of x. I just found out that this angle here is 50.5. It's the two angles I found put together. And I know that the length of this side is 7.6 and the length of this side is 2.4. I am now going to use the law of cosines to find x. You cannot use the law of sines. You could, but it would take quite a bit longer because you'd have to find these angles. We're just going to use the law of cosines and find our missing side. So again, it starts with the side opposite your angle. So x was the side opposite the angle that I know equals those two sides squared individually, so 2.4 squared plus 7.6 squared minus 2 times 2.4, uh-oh, I'm running into my other work, times 7.6 times the cosine of our angle, and our cosine, our angle again is 50.5. I apologize for that, it's kind of a mess. Um, with this, x is already isolated. So we just need to calculate this right-hand side. Um, you want to do so, so carefully, square the 2.4, square the 7.6, and multiply negative 2 times 2.4 times 7.6 times the cosine of 50.5. Okay, so I've done that. Um, 2.4 squared was 5.76, 7.6 squared is 57.76, and 2 times 2.4 times 7.6 times the cosine of 50.5 is at negative 23.2, the negative coming from the minus here. All right, now what we need to do is add and subtract here. So add these numbers and subtract 23.2, and that gives me 40.32 is equal to x squared. And we just have one more step to go. Uh, to remove an x squared, we do the opposite and take the square root of both sides. In this case it's not necessary to put the plus or minus here because we know that x is the length of a side and you can't have a negative length. So when we do that the square root of 40.32 is 
about 6.3. Hooray! We have solved this problem. Top to bottom, our solution, x, this missing diagonal, is 6.3.